very pleased uh, that I'm presenting uh, a sequential paper, the first paper which I presented last year again at the SME conference here in Pakistan was uh, what are the factors which drive SMEs to adopt environmental practices. And this is the, the ramp up paper, uh, or I would say the sequential one, that this time I'm talking about if SMEs have taken some years, then what are the factors which are still inhibiting them from becoming environmentally competitive or environmentally compliant. In terms of my association, as we have been asked to introduce ourselves, uh, I'm a assistant professor at GC University Lahore. I'm also associated with the business school at Global University in England. So, therefore, I have two co-authors with me, Professor Richard Brindle, he is professor of enterprise, and Dr. Anya Sheffer. She has been at Open University, but now she is working at Mangal. So I'm very pleased to introduce my co-authors. Interestingly, they both have been my PhD supervisors as well. Okay, to start with, uh, we all appreciate that SMEs contribute a lot to economic development, technological upgradation, etc., etc. However, recent literature also tells us that they also have significant environmental implications. And in the wake of that, we, we also have a move of uh, sustainable development goals, particularly talking about uh, responsible consumption and production. And this is inviting a lot of pressure from various stakeholders including customers, international supply chains, uh, national governments, uh, as well as NGOs. And they are all uh, the factors, the drivers, which are pushing firms to adopt environmental practices. And one of the key findings of our previous paper was that in addition to these drivers, these factors, these are the environmental values of owner managers, which came up very strongly, uh, particularly in the context of Pakistan, when we also talk about religion has a lot of implications. Safai is Iman had. Uh, however, uh, we identified that despite the fact that SMEs across the globe are taking some years to respond to this pressure from various stakeholders, they still uh, are constrained by a number of factors which operate at internal and external level. And prior research has covered both the developed and developing economies. Uh, but still we believe that there is merit in, in investigating these environmental barriers uh, in the context of emerging economies, more specifically because of the local and regional peculiarities which might underpin the internal barriers. At the same time, the institutional structure of developed and developing economies are not the same, they are different. For example, some of the countries offer more support to SMEs to adopt environmental practices the others lag behind, uh, just like uh, in the European continent, in America, the policies are more driven towards uh, environmental capacity building of SMEs. In countries like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, the efforts are still lagging. Uh, the kind of factors, uh, let, let me say uh, at the outset that I'm just trying to flag up the highlights of my paper because we have limited time to present these. So if we talk about the environmental barriers which have been identified previously, they are both internal and external, uh, ranging from uh, the lack of eco-literacy skills amongst SME owners, managers, to resource constraints, lack of policy support, uh, complexity of regulations, etc., etc. Uh, but as I said, there is still merit in investigating emerging economies. So here we end up with these two uh, aims uh, of our paper and uh, first one is to investigate barriers to environmental improvement in the leather industry in Pakistan which is a developing economy context indeed and building on those whatever barriers we identify we end up with, with offering a pragmatic framework or some policy options that how we can uh, address those barriers. Uh, I pretty much hope, uh, as we are in Pakistan, most of you will be much aware about the leather industry in Pakistan, but for those of you who do not know a lot about it, some of the highlights, that in terms of size, uh, most of the firms in the leather industry, they are SMEs, almost 90-95% according to Pakistan Standards Association latest data. They are small and medium enterprise. They, they are producing a range of products starting from leather garments to uh, wallets, birds, uh, 
handbags, shoes, gloves, etc., etc. But the most important thing is they are that these SMEs, in collaboration with large tech firms, they are the third largest export value sector for Pakistan after rice and textile. Uh, so here we can see, I believe they, they are so so much contributing to our international revenues. They are still facing some kind of environmental challenges and what kind of pollution activities they are generating. These are some of the pictures from the field work which I did in different cities in Pakistan, particularly in Sialkot, Kasur, some areas in Lahore, Gujarawala, as well as in Shekhapura. I'm afraid I could not go to Peshawar because of the security situation, so I mainly covered the whole of Punjab and indeed I went to Karachi as well. Kodang Industrial State, a big hub of leather, leather manufacturing units in Pakistan. So just to highlight the kind of pollution which these leather manufacturing units are producing, it ranges from contaminated water to solid waste. As well as we have some noise pollution because they are in generators, we have some air pollution because they are using chemicals. But the story does not end up here. We have a, a bright side of the story as well that while the pollution is there, there, there are a number of initiatives which these SMEs are actually taking. They are getting some trainings, just like we said that there should be some advice on the last slide where just a sample of the Certificate. We have cleaner production, production centers in Pakistan which are helping these firms to uh, develop their environmental skills. SMEs, because of lacking their resource capacity, they cannot adopt latest techno technologies just like end of pipe treatment plants. So we have cluster level water treatment plants, particularly in Karachi and Kasu. Uh, I think uh, another success, success story in the near future will be Siakot as well. So, well, 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 okay, there are a number of initiatives which are being taken at the firm level, at the cluster level, but still these firms believe that there are a number of other reasons which are constraining them to become environmentally compliant. And to examine this, we draw on a hybrid theoretical framework, which is under, underpinned by resource based view and institutional theory. We believe there is merit in combining theoretical frameworks because resource based view can help us to examine the factors which limit environmental engagement of SMEs at the internal level and institutional theory we believe uh, can help examine the factors which operate externally in the organizational field, so which is external to firms. I'm happy to talk uh, in more detail if you have any questions later. In terms of methodology, a very brief review, it is a qualitative research. Uh, which is multi, which, of, which is underpinned by multiple case study design. We interviewed some uh, owner managers, and we also interviewed other stakeholders, just like mineral production centers, chemical suppliers. And it is indeed, since it is qualitative work, it is informed by boundary theory and inductive analysis approach. And NVO was used to analyze it. So just to give you uh, a snapshot that how we ensure the rigor. The trustworthiness of worthiness of our findings, so we draw on your methodology, which tells us where the evidence came from. The first, the first one, the first boxes, they tell us what the evidence was. This is an extract from interviews. We scaled it up to the first order the themes, second order themes, and we ended up in internal environmental barriers. Similarly, we did the same thing with our data on external environmental barriers. Uh, so, I mean, there is a lot of detail further which you can go through in the paper. Considering time constraint, uh, I will summarize that at the internal level, Pakistani SMEs believe that they cannot adopt environmental practices because of financial constraints. They cannot buy advanced technologies, what we call cleaner technologies. Uh, labor related issues came up very strongly. Labor is not educated, they have not been going to educational institutions, they have not been getting trainings. Uh, at the same time, they are just concerned with uh, earning some money. They are not bothered about health, what is going on in the community. Shortage of areas, some of the SMEs shared that they wanted to adopt environmental practices, they wanted to install some cleaner technologies, but they did not have resources to buy more land. Uh, stringent uh, barriers relate to policy barriers, just like we have institutional gaps in Pakistan. 
policy is there, it is implemented, but the environmental inspectors, for example, they do not perform their jobs properly. In terms of infrastructural barriers, of course, the issues of drain came up very strongly. Uh, and then the communities were not very responsive. So just two minutes and I will offer a couple of highlights on the policy options which we recommend. We should overcome institutional gaps. Uh, and I think uh, at the same time, governance of primary clusters needs to be improved. The role of district government is very important. The cluster management cannot do everything on their own. So maybe a collaborative arrangement between cluster management and district level government can help us address these. Institutionalizing cleaner production instead of end of pipe technologies because end of pipe technologies are expensive, cleaner production processes are not expensive. So there is a, a, an option of raising equal literacy skills amongst SME owner managers and in addition to uh, this, there, there is a need for motivational push and a higher need of informational support. And finally, uh, just yeah, just to, there is a need for raising the level of social accountability for SMEs. Uh, I think this was a very important finding. SME owner managers think that the local community which is there should not push them to adopt environmental practices. So maybe we need to do a lot that we need to maybe draw on media campaigns that media can help us to raise awareness among people. The role of educational institution can be very imperative. Maybe we can have some environment specific educational programs, modules, papers which we can through which we can educate our students which can then cascade the information at the societal level. Some of the cleaner production centers are working in Pakistan and some of the SMEs believe that they do not get enough support from them. Uh, so there is need for these clusters or, and common facility centers to improve their support. And final, last one, uh, of course, access to finance. And the two findings which I want to highlight is some of the owner managers regard commercial banks, which is conventional banking, they do not want to get loans from them, for, for example, for buying cleaner technologies. So Islamic banking, uh, there is a lot of opportunity for Islamic bankers to draw on this. And we also suggest that central bank uh, can direct commercial banks to offer environment-specific loans to SMEs uh, at relatively lenient or less rate terms. Thank you very much. Thank you.